Every cell in our body is like an engine. And like the engine in a car, for example, each cell requires fuel to run and also produces waste byproducts that must be eliminated. The circulatory system delivers the fuel that cells require, including oxygen provided by the respiratory system and nutrients provided by the digestive system. The circulatory system also removes cellular waste byproducts, including carbon dioxide, which is expelled from the body by the respiratory system, and waste byproducts dissolved in water, which are filtered and eliminated by the urinary system. Eliminating soluble waste is not the only function of the urinary system. It is also one of the most important organ systems involved in maintaining the proper composition of our blood. The urinary system is responsible for regulating blood volume and blood pressure, regulating the concentration of sodium, potassium, chloride, calcium, and other ions in the bloodstream, and stabilizing the pH balance of the blood. If any one of these regulatory functions were to fail, the result would quickly be fatal. The urinary system consists of the kidneys, the ureters, the urinary bladder, and the urethra. The most important and complex kidneys. Purplish-brown in color, the kidneys are about the size of a human fist and shaped like, well, kidney beans. The beans were named after the kidneys, not the other way around. The kidneys are located on each side of the spinal column, behind the abdominal cavity wall, just above the waistline, eliminated. Our kidneys work as a filter to preserve as much of our body's water volume as possible. If they didn't, or couldn't, we would die of severe dehydration. Healthy kidneys filter all the blood in our body every 30 minutes. They filter and remove approximately 1.5 liters of urine every 24 hours. This would fill about two and a half bathtubs in a year's time. The urinary system's regulatory role in our body is geared towards producing a condition called homeostasis. This word literally means standing still or stationariness. In this context, it is used to describe the proper balance of chemicals and other substances in the body and the harmonious functioning and coordination of all the various bodily processes and organ systems. The kidneys contribute to homeostasis by maintaining proper blood volume and pressure, by regulating the balance of chemicals and other substances in the body's fluids, particularly the crucial amount of sodium, and by regulating the pH or acidity and alkaline levels of the bloodstream. Urination is one of the most basic and visible processes of the body, but as we've seen, it is far from simple. The organs of the urinary system are constantly filtering our blood to remove the waste products caused by cellular metabolism and other harmful substances and are largely responsible for maintaining the crucial balance of homeostasis, which is essential for life. Pull up in front of your crib now Keep the shine on the corn Step up out of the breeze And knees all the way to the back And you down now Let's bump the ground to the moan That's your age trying to hurt you Slowly take out the work If I just wanna make it feel real good Let the words rise stick Bump the king wheels Work on by the sun beam On my candy coat is good Seven o'clock on the dock I'm in my drop top Cruising the streets
As we've just seen, the process of digestion and absorption releases nutrients into the bloodstream. But excess nutrients, salts, minerals, and water, as well as drugs and toxins, can also enter the bloodstream through the digestive system. Further, the cells of the body release toxic waste products such as ammonia, which is converted to less toxic urea by the liver, into the bloodstream. These excess materials and drugs, toxins, and wastes if allowed to build up in the bloodstream, can threaten an individual by throwing off critical chemical balances. The blood and extracellular fluid that bathes body cells must have a close to neutral pH. Precisely regulated concentrations of various salts, appropriate levels of water and dissolved substances, and of course, cellular waste products must not be allowed to reach toxic levels. 
The burden of maintaining proper chemical balance or homeostasis in the body falls largely on the kidneys. Human kidneys are paired, kidney bean-shaped organs located on either side of the spinal column and extending slightly above the waist. Each is approximately 13 centimeters long, 8 centimeters wide, and 2.5 centimeters thick. Blood carrying various waste enters each kidney through a renal artery. After it has been filtered, the blood exits through the renal vein. Urine, which is a mixture of water, dissolved wastes and toxins, and some excess nutrients filtered out of the blood, leaves each kidney through a narrow muscular tube called the ureter. Peristaltic contractions drive urine through the ureter to the bladder, a hollow muscular chamber that collects and stores urine. The walls of the bladder contain smooth muscle capable of considerable expansion. Urine is retained in the bladder by two sphincter muscles located at its base just above the juncture with the urethra. When the bladder becomes distended, receptors in the walls trigger reflexive contractions. The sphincter nearest the bladder, the internal sphincter, is open during these contractions. However, the lower or external sphincter is under voluntary control, so the reflex can be suppressed by the brain unless bladder distension becomes acute. The average adult bladder will hold about 500 milliliters or approximately a pint of urine, but the urge to urinate is triggered by considerably smaller accumulations. Urine completes its journey to the outside through a single narrow tube called the urethra. The kidney contains a solid outer layer where urine is formed and a hollow inner chamber called the renal pelvis, which is a branched collecting chamber that funnels urine into the ureter. The outer layer of the kidney is divided into a fan-shaped inner renal medulla and an overlying renal cortex. Microscopic examination of these structures reveals an array of tiny individual filters or nephrons. Over one million nephrons are packed into the cortex of each kidney, with many extending into the renal medulla. Blood is conducted to each nephron by an arteriole that branches from the renal artery. Within a cup-shaped portion of the nephron, the Bowman's capsule, the arteriole branches into a network of approximately 50 microscopic capillaries that form an intertwined mass, the glomerulus. The arteriole leaving the glomerulus is smaller in diameter than the one coming in, creating pressure within the structure that forces water and many dissolved substances such as urea, glucose, salts, amino acids, and certain vitamins through its extremely permeable capillary walls in a process called filtration. The resulting fluid, called filtrate, is collected in the Bowman's capsule for transport through the tubule.